-hmm. I have one here behind my <laughs> my pad. Uh, oh. Say hello, the world. It's very different when you start a band when you're like 15 and you just play, you know, youth clubs or maybe when you're 18, you manage to play in a local pub or like something like out oh, there, right? These are small festivals where you could play. Things are very different when you suddenly like, okay, we need to be gone from home for like a month, a few times a year. And there's no guarantee that it's going to bring the same amount of money that you would get from a day job. So it's... It's only natural, but at some, I mean, for people at some point, they're like, okay, I can't do this. I have other plans in my life. And I'm, people might have spouses or kids or whatever responsibilities. And it's natural. Uh, I just said it in one interview. It's crazy that there are like bands who still have the original lineup, like Rammstein. I think that it's still the original lineup. It's, it's, it's insane that everybody's life stayed in a way that you could stay in a band. I mean, not that many bands start from the top. You really need to build it. It's a big sacrifice. I don't want to sound like too dramatic here, but it, it actually <laughs> is. It, it, there are a lot of hours that you could spend otherwise when you join a band. It, it's still worth it, but the way I see it. I mean, when you get to play live, and that's why COVID time was so fucking hard. I, I always enjoyed writing music and working in a studio, but those have never been even close to the feeling of uh, being on stage and playing for a live audience. When someone gets any kicks out of the music that you get kicks out when you compose it, it's like magical. <laughs> People told me many times that, uh, you know, you guys would be so much more successful if you would just give people what they want. Like yeah. make, make more of the party songs and like, no, <laughs> like that's not how we compose. We really make songs that we feel good. This is fun. This is something that we like. And every member of the band can say like, yes, these are fucking good songs. I just guess if we would start to customize the songs according to trend or whatever, we would fail miserably. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, that's also like, a, I guess it's also the price to pay. If you found, if you found, yeah, that's the conjugation, uh, your sound as a band, if you found your style, like ACDC, Iron Maiden, you recognize the band from the first album to last, then there's no point to keep changing it or adding weird stuff like we do. We fool around a lot sometimes. And it's okay. It's just not for Enzibar. We like to push the boundaries. Maybe it sounds a bit too pompous, but that's how we feel, like to try new stuff. There's no drinking song. There's no crowd pleaser <laughs> on this album uh, because it was really composed during difficult times. It was mainly composed during COVID time. I think it was something that we had to get out of the system uh, because now we're already working with the next album. We're never em empty-handed. We just When we finish enough songs, then we release an album. That's pretty much how it mm -hmm. always has gone. But yeah, for this album, it's... Uh, quite cohesive album in a way. I think one reason might be that uh, Marcus, the founder and the main composer of the band, he had this wild idea at some point, like a long, long time ago, that he wants to make an album with just one song. And we were like, dude, that's so stupid idea. And <laughs> I mean, there are bands who do this, like, like Moon Sorrow is one of my favorite bands and a bunch of others have made this. Uh, as, as a lyric writer, my first, panic was like so do you have an idea what this one song album would be about like he, he really said like yeah i want to have like same parts repeating here and there in different styles i was like dude what's the story and he was like i have no story i just have a vision of a grandier album i was like dude fuck it, forget that if you don't have a story i can't <laughs> i cannot write one hour song i mean literally for a song that that i don't have any idea but luckily, we managed to, uh, to talk him out of it. <laughs> but the good thing is that all the raw ideas that were kind of planned to be together and then separated as individual songs end up that, so that the album is quite cohesive. It really sounds like it's unite, united somehow. Uh, sorry, once again, my vocabulary limits are met. <laughs> Here, uh, yeah, reached. Uh, you get the idea actually serves this album well because it's, it's quite cinematic the lyrics are fragments of 
the fantasy book that I'm planning to write eventually when I have time. <laughs> <laughs> when I start writing lyrics, when I listen to like raw demos or whatever, uh, I start to visualize stuff. Not just, of course, English is not my native language, so I, I always visualize the song somehow. I, I always love movies. I love going to cinema. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Once I get the idea that I'm gonna make these two worlds meet, the the book that I never thought would meet in the universe, but when I decided that they actually meet, because already when you're writing or uh, planning a book, when you're like this story is evolving, for me it's very visual. I think it's only natural. So when I started to add Ezra music to that, it really like <laughs> became like a, I said it in in one of these clips that uh, we published or like these teasers of the album. But I, when I started thinking this more like a musical instead of like traditional album, it started mm. to make much more sense to me. But NC uh, if something feels natural, like uh, there yeah. have been some lines in the in the past that they just came when I listened to demo that, okay, these yeah. words just started to ring in my head and they were like, okay, this needs to be finished. But like, um, it's never like intentional. Uh, mm -hmm. I did with my bit of topic, but uh, I during COVID, I finally, well, there was a bit of extra time, no touring. Finally, after like fucking 20 years, I started uh, doing a bit more like industrialish kind of stuff. Now I've been planning to release an EP with just finished songs. I mean, all the lyrics will be finished because... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I noticed that for that stuff, also like some songs that I just had like Finnish lines in my head all the time. I'm like, this is so stupid to start to translate and try to artificially start to <laughs> change the language that I mm -hmm. have in my head for this song. And uh, I think I have now like three of those songs ready. So I think when I have two more, then I'm going to publish an EP with just Finnish mm -hmm. language, just out of spite. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's also, it's a good direction that uh, there are bands and artists who use their native language also i mean i love i love english i grew up with we, we don't dub uh, movies or anything in finland so i really grew up listening to english and uh i miss it <laughs> like you during covid time it was really weird yeah. because uh uh there were years when i was on the road like almost half of the year speaking english in a tour bus because we had non-finnish crew members also so it, end up talking a lot of English, so I really miss it if I <laughs> don't get to speak English. And, and I, I reached uh, the point that every now and then that I remember the word in English and not in Finnish. So that's uh, funny. But I think it's a really good thing that people stay connected and stay proud of their roots. I think mm. it's just the world is beautiful and uh, many countries have beautiful histories and beautiful languages uh one of my favorite bands uh from Faroe islands tour uh yeah they sing in their own language and i don't understand a single word but it just fucking sounds so good oh <laughs> rammstein has a good song and i don't speak any german i can order a beer in german but that's it <laughs> but uh, uh people who actually speak german they, they really don't like the lyrics are poems and when you understand the small nuances in the word mm -hmm. it's not as simple as it kind of sounds mm -hmm. so that, that that's the the beauty of it and yeah i know people who started uh, learning german because of rammstein i know people who started to learn fucking finnish because of enzi perum and other bands from this genre in a way that that's completely mental because <laughs> it's so small country but oh, then yeah. again uh any everything that you learn and you want to evolve as a human being I root for that, like go no matter how niche uh, or insignificant it might seem to others. But if it's something that you have a drive for and fucking go for it. I don't know. Well, the things that I love all kind of music, but of course, I'm most like neck deep in metal. Mm -hmm. So I can't really talk on behalf of other genres. But I think there's really something in the metal genre, at least, that this kind of phenomenon. I think that's also 
kind of the commercial downfall of the whole genre because you can't really force people. I mean, there's no right or wrong way to listen to music or enjoy music, but uh, for many people, music is just kind of background music with some punchlines. But uh, I think that's really something in metal. The music is something much more. It's, uh, yeah, you really click on to some albums for decades and you know they, you, it's not something kind of fast food that like what is the biggest hit now I'll enjoy that and not, then I'll forget it when the next hit comes and that's really not typical in metal in yeah. so that's why people get involved and that they <laughs> invest their, their they really invest their time for did not want it to connect with the <laughs> album in any way our edge film music that was really something never <laughs> in my mind but never say never like i said I, i'm a geek i always loved movies i always loved video games i grew up with commodore 64 I, if you know this one from <laughs> eons ago i loved fantasy books i love sci-fi also so it's been a big part of my life always Something that I've always enjoyed. When well, look at the band where I'm playing, it's like heroic stuff, and <laughs> it's perfect for me. I don't remember exact. I can't give you a date when it yeah. started, but just just this idea that uh, would be really cool to write a book. I'm not, I'm not thinking about the career as an author, but uh, just mm-hmm. this one story that started to cook in my head, and uh, I always thought I'm gonna write it when things are a bit more calm. <laughs> so. I'm 46 now, so I kind of thought maybe when I reach 50 or something, then I sit down, maybe I can quit my day job again, maybe we have enough gigs, and I can start writing a book in the morning and go to rehearsals and do a few tours and then come home to my cats and you know, have a glass of wine and continue writing. That was kind of the idea I had in my head. But of course, as the last years has shown, universe has a fucking weird sense of humor and mentality <laughs> to fuck up all your plans. Yeah. <laughs> here I am uh, it was, I was really like desperate when I was re- uh, writing the lyrics for this album I mean when I was searching for the topics when we had just like raw couple of minute raw demos of, and even at some point we were not even sure what parts go in which song to be it was really like this big yeah. pile of shit <laughs> but when I was listening to these, I was trying to find like, okay, this song has this kind of mood, this could go in that direction. And uh, I always talk with Marcus, the, the founder and the main composer of the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he comes up with melody or riffs, I always ask, like, what, what did you have in your mind when you're composing? What do you see? What do you visualize? Most of the time, he's not very helpful because <laughs> he's literally <laughs> a musician. He, actually, he now told that he would love to write lyrics also, but he's a. Uh, I need to kick his ass because I, I. That's what I said during all this year for the other guys. Like, please bring lyrical ideas. We can even write together. Just if you have one line, one idea, then let's write together. For Winter Storm, it was a very rocky road, so to say, uh, to find the lyrical team because I, I tried dozens of raw ideas but they never felt right they were always very artificial kind of <laughs> and uh, at some point the song started to get a bit of their shape nothing finalized but uh, the guys were like we really can't go further before we have lyrics at, and at least like uh, the vocal arrangement some kind of raw stuff because when you start adding vocals to song you see the song in completely different light. Suddenly, you know, it's like, okay, we actually need to change this or that. We need to change that rhythm. Okay, this part cannot come here. This, yeah. or this is in wrong key. You know, I mean, to raise it or lower it or whatever. And uh, there was a lot of pressure coming from the rest of the band. I think I was starting to think like, getting a bit desperate. I think I was starting to like, going through my bookshelf. Like, okay, I'm gonna read one of my favorite books, and make like a concept album of that. And then they were like, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, but you're writing a book yourself. I don't have that many pages, but something. Like the idea, like, okay, could I take a fragment? Because yeah, the, the 
the whole book will be super long. There's gonna be like generation. So if I take like a little bit of this big story, could this raw song could be tell about like this faction or could this song tell the story of this character? Then it starts to click, kind of mm -hmm. to make sense. And then I told the guys like, hey, I got this crazy idea. <laughs> Uh, with this work, I, I think they were just happy that I finally got some idea. Uh, luckily, they, they approved the idea, and uh, here we are. Uh, I think I said it in one of these kind of teasers we made about the album that uh, the moment I started to think Winterstorm more like a musical and not like a traditional metal album, then it started to make sense to me. Then all the visualizing became like much more vivid, and uh, then the whole story of the album make much more sense. I always hated making music videos. I think metal mu music videos are mostly they're very boring. It's just guys in the forest and headbang. It's just, there's no budget. There's no budget. There's no idea. That's how it usually goes. And yeah, yeah we're not Rammstein. We don't have a million dollars for video, which would be pretty cool. So there's actually going to be four actual, actual action, four videos, plus now the lyric video that came out. And once they're all out, you can watch these four in a row and then it's going to be like a short movie. So this, oh, I'm really cool. proud and happy. Yeah, then it, it kind of continues always from the previous one. I mean, there, there's a time gap between the, the story that happens between the, the videos, yeah. but uh, in a way you can watch it in a row. And this is something that I'm really, really, really happy. That was the idea with Marcin, that the guy who makes the videos, that uh, every video needs to be better than the previous one. He, he got crazy ambitious with, the <laughs> with this stuff. Uh, yeah, when I sent him the like the scripts, he came back to me like, Sami, you, you understand that we don't have the budget of Lord of the Rings. And I was like, yeah, I, I know, I know, but let, <laughs> let's see what we can do here. Like, could we do this or that? And, then, yeah. and yeah, just the, the second one already is like, giving me goosebumps and now i can say it because we're just playing there and then the other stuff is happening and it's it's so good uh, it was really really hard because uh yeah the the natural cycle <laughs> of a band is like you release an album and then you go on tour for a couple of years and during that time stuff happens in your life and in, with for the band and that's that's the stuff that those experiences are the ones where you draw the inspiration for the next album. Where I see it, every album is uh, like a mirror and uh, what happened in the band and and in the member's life in the last few years. This album would be would be very different <laughs> without the pandemic. But it was just something we had to get out of the system. Uh, yeah, you can really hear from uh, on the, the previous uh, Tavasic that this kind of sparkle of joy in some songs, but yeah. uh, on Winterstone, there's yeah, no beer songs, no, not that many happy moments. <laughs> well, Finland, is, it was actually not that bad. And anyway, we don't like human beings in Finland. We like to keep our distance all the time. <laughs> we don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> yeah, you, you've been here. Uh, so it was not difficult to keep the distance or any like, what the fuck? Mm. like suddenly they say you need to keep two meters like what the fuck why do I need to be that close what's wrong with three meters that we normally keep <laughs> and when I started to see our the gig calendar started to get empty and empty and empty uh, I knew something had to be done I was like I need to pay my rent I need to fucking feed my cats like yeah. Uh, but yeah luckily I I want to thank my Sami from the past for studying two professions from social health care so I worked as a nurse for two years, and now I work, work with uh, disabled people for the last two oh, years. Cool. So, yeah, I had this safety net all the time. But the, it also kept me busy. I, I just had my normal nine-to-five rhythm, so it was not as bad. The downside of this, you know, I managed to pay my bills, but uh, I couldn't participate to rehearsals as I normally could. Also slowed down the process because... Uh, well, I'm also one of the guys who brings ideas. To rehearsal room. It's not the same if you send like MP3, the guys like, hey, I have got this idea. 
than if you really sit down in rehearsal room and try stuff together and start variating stuff. It's a completely different process then. Some okay. people really suffered much more. I, when I was working with old people for two years, yeah, I really saw people dying. So, and we like old people staying indoors, like, and mm -hmm. wasting the last years of their lives in that. It, it was, yeah. it was very harsh. So in a way it's uh, almost shallow to complain like, oh, I couldn't go on the tour. Like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. Yeah, it, it could have been much worse. I mean, it fucking sucked donkey balls, but it was still yeah. not as bad as for many people. But it was desperate times enough that we came up with an album like this. That uh, we couldn't. Yeah, we just released Talasic and we couldn't tour. It was like impossible to get in the mood of writing new song. It was like, mm -hmm. like it did doesn't work like that. You need to live a bit you need to have stuff and yeah. well it was very uncertain times on many many ways so try to be a smart ass but uh, when you literally inside that moment in, in that time of the history so it it was not that easy for anyone i mean this album would have never be composed in any other time lassie has been on our albums for fuck's sake how many years <laughs> He, he, he's one of those guys that we, well, we love uh, the sound of his instruments and we love the way he plays. He's a world-class musician. Well, he's a folk musician, yeah. but in his own genre, he's like, for this album, we didn't need any other folk instruments. We, that's how we do it. We listen to the songs. What do they need? I mean, it would be very easy to, to get all kind of folk instruments and just glue them on top of our music to be more yeah. folkish. But that's not how we work. If, if we hear in the ears of our soul that, yeah, this part needs nuclear harpa or whatever, banjo, <laughs> then yeah. we try to sort it out. Luckily, he still likes to work with us, even though he lives in different country nowadays. But uh, it's always always a pleasure because he's a professional you have like a raw idea it could be something like this and then he comes and, doo -doo 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 -doo, and does it <laughs> a million times better uh but madeleine it was a yeah this song scars in my heart that was a tricky one it's one of the most beautiful songs margus has ever composed i mean the main melody is it's, it's really beautiful and when he sent like the very first raw demo of this it probably had like two three parts in mm -hmm. a row just not not like a real song uh i called him like dude is this yours like, are you, are you fucking with me? Like, this is way too good. <laughs> this has to be like some classical composer stuff. And uh, he said, no, it's mine. I was like, this, this is going to be an amazing song. It's probably the most straightforward song on the album. So it was quite easy to put together the arrangement. Uh, it was all, all time there. The, how are we going to do the vocals? Because for this kind of song, it's very different than when you have like very fast and furious song. It's quite easy yeah. to come up with the, the vocal ideas you have many alternatives but uh for this slow ballad it needs to be very emotional and uh we tried uh becca's clean voice and we did even a demo with Be uh, pete shouting harsh vocals and that was yeah. quite fucking fantastic <laughs> <laughs> but yeah at that point i only had like an idea of what this song would be about what mm -hmm. event and i only had like few lines of lyrics when we wrote the uh, when we recorded the demos. I think it was Janne, the drummer, who said it out loud that everybody knew that this is not working. We need a female singer for this song. Sorry, guys. Yeah. And I, everybody was like, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's so true. <laughs> but then we couldn't find the singer because, uh, of course, there are really good singers, female singers in metal and also other genres because it's a ballad. So we were also thinking about singers from other genres. But uh, we just couldn't find... The, the singer that would be like, yes, that's her. We need to ask her. So then we had a tour coming up uh, with Payne and Elaine and Liu Jin. We agreed, like, okay, let's go on the tour. Let's get back to this topic after the tour. Like, I think it was, yeah, like second show. We went to see like all the other bands. Everybody was like, fuck, this lady is a good singer. She has a really beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. Then we listened to demo, the weird demos that we made and she said, yeah, it's a beautiful song. And uh, after the tour, she sent like 
few seconds clip like with this kind of vocal technique work or whatever and already then we could hear okay oh, this this song just elevated to 11 spinal tap <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. yeah then she flew to Helsinki nailed it rest is history and every other song on the album has like a uh, layered vocals like harmonies and even Pete's harsh vocals sometimes are doubled by the like yeah. high and low and big choirs and so on but for this one there's only one vocal track very what is it? solitude what's the adjective of solitude uh, solitary like... solitary thank you yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah really solitary well it, it tells about a widow who's uh on the oh, beach, uh, yeah. mourning for lost love. So it really fits the production of the song and the mentality and everything. It, but there's only one voice, just this lady with her thoughts and sadness and grief and whatever. So it, it it's a small thing. The cool thing is that you don't know that you don't miss all the harmonies because she's mm -hmm. such a good singer. The whole team we had uh, was pretty much the same the producer recorder guy Jan Neyotin I mean we worked with him many times first time actually on Victoria Song's album back when we were young and pretty <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were there also for Thalassic and it's really nice to work with this guy and uh, uh, Jens Bugren mixed Thalassic and now with the song it felt very natural it was really easy to work with Jens it's such a world-class professional. Yula Havanacek has done our album covers for a long, long time. Always a pleasure. Mikko Mustonen, he has, we made orchestrations with him since from afar, I think. It, it's nice to have people you can trust around you and people who are more talented than you are. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, we already have some wild ideas. I, I guess the direction is into something better there's some light at the end of the tunnel i mean we're still in the middle of a shit show i mean the we're still paying the dues for this covid thing on on many way and uh in a way i would say that the next album might have a bit more happier tone let's see we're, we don't have all the songs ready yet absolutely not banjo again that's a very happy thing. yeah let's see let's see let's <laughs> but yeah there were there were some like i said this was Winter Song was something we had to get out of the system so we can actually start living again. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah, the plans for the future we have, yeah, two years are quite busy. And, uh, some shows in Finland with a uh, Finnish band called Swallow the Sun. Oh, then yeah. in January, we start uh, this massive tour in Europe called Pagan Fest, probably the biggest tour we've ever done. Yeah, I'm sorry, I can't reveal anything yet because they're not announced, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of plans for the next two years, pretty much. And yeah, we're, I guess that I can tell it's not fucking, we're not NASA or NATO or anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're coming to North America fucking finally. Last time was 2019. Oh. Yes, and we can <laughs> wait to get back there. And yeah, I, I think within two years we try to, well, I would love to say play on every continent, but we only played in Africa once. I think we played in South Africa. Well, I'm always up to go play anywhere where it's nothing I, I i have so many <laughs> albums uh yeah the i haven't heard the i haven't listened to the new nightwish yet and it's one of the most important band for me ever uh there's also new winter sun i haven't listened to that and now actually on the same day that our album is coming out there's a new swallow the sun coming out oh, so right. there's there, there are so many albums and i forgot quite a few before you hit the studio, at least I listen to the demos as much as possible. Yeah. So being very egocentric here, listen yeah. to all music. 